So you can imagine, you go to Hibai Fita, that this dunya from beginning to end is now worth to Allah a wing of a mosquito. A wing of a mosquito? Allah said, if it is worth for me as, as much as a wing of a mosquito, I will not give a kafir, I will not give a person who, 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 who forgets Allah, a person who doesn't recognize Allah, a person who disobeys Allah, a, a sip of water to drink. He said, I'm not going to give them water to drink. If it is worth for me, but it's worthless, Allah is saying. It's not even worth a wing, of, a wing of a mosquito, the whole dunya. So I give it to the one I like and I give it to the one I hate. It doesn't matter. This life is for everybody. Why? Because it is nothing. It's useless. It's an illusion. It's temporary. It's an illusion. It doesn't mean anything. SubhanAllah. Our original state is death. How long were you dead? Actually, none of us remember. SubhanAllah. How long were you dead before Allah brought you to the womb of your mother? Do you remember? How long were you in the world of dead? Allahu A'lam. How many years? How many billions of years? SubhanAllah. And how, how long are you going to be dead in the grave after we die? Before the day of judgment begins? In the Alm al barzakh In the life of the grave? How long are you going to be there? You know? 4,000, 60,000 years, 40? I don't know. Thousands of years. SubhanAllah. So, you compare it with this life. Put it into perspective. Put it into an equation. Put it in a timeline. How long you are dead and how long you are alive and how long you are going to be dead again. And how long, subhanAllah, you are going to live forever the real life in the day of judgment. So, the Quran is full of stories of the people of the past. That this dunya misled them. That they forgot Allah. They took the things that Allah created and they made something out of them and they became impressed with them and they used it. They didn't recognize Allah. They didn't you know, praise Allah for them. They didn't thank Allah. They used it on the contrary to disobey Allah, to disobey their prophets. Allah sent them wisdom and knowledge and they said, no, we're more knowledgeable. Our knowledge is more solid than the knowledge of Allah, than the knowledge of the prophets. We follow our own guidance. We're very technologically advanced, excuse me. Today we have knowledge, mashallah. Cell phones, iPhone, iCar, iTesla. No, it's not iTesla, it's just Tesla, inshallah. Self-driving vehicles, inshallah. Self-driving robot, flying, inshallah. Optimus robot, whatever is coming in the future is scary. SubhanAllah, you know? Artificial intelligence, SubhanAllah. And then people think that they can control the earth. They become arrogant, they boast, just exactly like the people of the past. They become rebellious, they become disobedient. Why? Because they think we have technology, we have power. We could do things that nobody could do before. But they forget that this knowledge comes from Allah. This power comes from Allah. Same thing with the Ad. SubhanAllah, they said, Man ashaddu minna quwa kanu yatafannanuna fil bunyan. They used to build, they were in lofty buildings. SubhanAllah. Irama dhati al-imad allati lam yukhla' mitluha fil bilad. Allah is saying that the buildings that they used to build, the pillars, they're so huge that nothing, that nothing is built like it in the world. If Allah is saying nothing is built like it, it's going to make our building look like nothing. So these ad, they were stronger, bigger, and they had better technology than us in terms of building. They were, they were very advanced and they said, who is going to destroy us? We're stronger than Allah, subhanAllah. We're stronger. Nobody could destroy us. A'udhu billahi minishtarajin. Allah is saying that don't they know that Allah that created them, he, has, he, he is stronger than them. And Allah brought the punishment where they don't expect. The houses they built became their graves. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Wind. SubhanAllah. Small thing. You don't know the army of Allah. So Allah is warning us that when every time is the sunnah of Allah, when the people, the, the jinn and the humans, uh, they work together all the time, all these technologies and fun things, Make no mistakes, it's shayateen and humans in the jinn, just like the time of Sulaiman and Hakim, working hard to mislead us, inshallah. Shayateen and insu al-jinn. Allah made enemies to the prophets. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَا لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ عَدُوًّا شَيَاطِينَ الْإِنسِ وَالْجِنْ يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخْرُ فَالْقَوْلِ غُرُورًا They're there to mislead people, the technologies, all kind of stuff to distract man from his purpose to worship Allah. Do you know what is the name shaitan means? Shaitan means today it has a, a very negative connotation and it deservingly, you know, deservingly so. 
Shaitan means in Arabic shadana, it means anything that pulls you away from remembering Allah. Anything that is pulling you from your original purpose. It's pulling you from your mission in life. It's pulling you from your goals in life. In your daily task, what you should be doing. It's anything that distracts you away from your mission in life. Your mission is in life is to worship Allah, period. To worship Allah, obey Allah, obey the Prophet, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Follow the wisdom and the knowledge that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. Don't follow someone who's going to speculate because he invented some type of technology. It's artificial intelligence. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. These things became so advanced. So and this young, our young, our young kids rely on it already. Subhanallah. The other day I was, um, we were making videos here at the masjid and these brothers, and they said, we don't have a topic. I said, brother Abdullah, you know how we can get a topic? And we could quickly get, uh, I said, I'm not prepared. I don't have anything right now on top of my head. They said, no, it's easy. We're going to just tell AI. AI is going to tell us, inshallah. You, inshallah, say the topic, inshallah. And then we'll dictate it to the AI and inshallah, artificial intelligence, inshallah. Chat, GPT or GTP, whatever it is, inshallah. It's going to spit it out. And it did. Subhanallah. Some decent <laughs> da'wah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi Yeah, one topic. Subhanallah. Nifaq, he'll give you everything, inshallah. He himself is a munafiq. A'udhu billahi minh sarajim. Subhanallah. It's already in there, the information. Subhanallah. So, ya khuti wa ibbai fi Allah, the matter became so confused to us nowadays that you don't know who to trust. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You don't know who to trust. People are in a state of confusion, total confusion, totally lost. So, what do you do in this case? And it's going to get worse and worse. This chat GPTs and things like this. Now, we're going to soon have robots that are going to do human jobs. Subhanallah. Many of you, you need to think hard. Yeah, so, you know, my friend, the mechanic is looking at me. Your job too is going to go and shell. <laughs> Pretty soon, the robot is going to diagnose your car and, and order the part and put it for you, inshallah. Right? So why we're going to think about what career we want in the future that's going to exist. So, ikhwati wa hibbai fillah. It's uh, subhanallah, the confusion is going to come and it's going to come to the future generation to a point where this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you know what is coming, you say, Alhamdulillah, I am, I am old and I'm going to die before these things become manifest. Can you imagine having robots roaming the streets? Subhanallah, they're going to be more than humans. Inna lillahi wa inna We're just now robot cars, right? Pick up, pick people up, inshallah. Way more, way more, way less, I don't know. <laughs> inshallah. Good luck getting into one of these. Subhanallah. I don't trust them yet. Subhanallah. Right? Confuse a building for water and water for building and then you're going to be in trouble, right? Subhanallah. So in any case, there's going to be confusion. And people have so much reliance on technology nowadays. Subhanallah. Can you imagine if the internet went out? Everything has an app now. You want to think, an app. You want to do something, there is an app for that. You want to do, you know, you know, you want to do dua, there is a dua app. If you don't have the dua app, what are you going to do? Inshallah, if you want to read the Quran, there is a Quran app. Subhanallah, if you don't have the Quran app, what's going to happen? If you don't have internet connection. Subhanallah, I took the flight and my app wasn't working inside the plane, inshallah. So I got stuck. <laughs> if you don't know the Quran by heart, <laughs> how are you going to read the Quran throughout your flight? Subhanallah. So much over-reliance on technology. Subhanallah. It's funny, but it's crazy. Can you imagine people living without the internet? Subhanallah. It's just over-reliance on things that, Subhanallah. And Allah is saying that once people become, think that they have control over things and they have technology that they think they can control the earth and what is in it, Allah is saying my punishment is going to come to them all of a sudden. Just like the people before us. This is the sunnah of Allah. And Subhanallah. We did not leave any sin of the people of the past except that people are doing it today. The people of Qamulut, Allah was severely angry with them. Now is pushing, is being pushed and becoming the norm. There was a lady who was a journalist and she went and covered just I think last month or a couple of months ago. It was that fam infamous month and she went to San Francisco to cover that event. And the lady came back and she was giving her account. She's a journalist. She's not even a Muslim. SubhanAllah. She said, what I saw, I wish I would have never seen it. I wish I can unsee it. She said, I've seen horrible things. 
I've seen people doing fascia on the street, openly in front of children, in front of children, doing the fascia of Omulut openly. SubhanAllah. That's why Rasulullah warned us that my ummah is going to be mu'afa except when they begin to do mujahara bil ma'asiyah. When you begin to public, publicly advertise and do the fahisha ma sabaqukum biha min al alameen, subhanallah, like the fahisha of Qamulut, then Rasulullah wait, wait for the punishment. The ummah is going to be safe as long as they don't advertise the sin. But once the major sin like this one become widespread and open, wait for the punishment for the side of Allah. May Allah protect us. Yeah, I mean. so, so what kind of sin that we didn't commit today of the people of the past? That's why the Quran is wise, the intelligent. Allah told us, do not cheat people in their dealings. Don't eat riba. Don't take money from people haram way. You know, give them loans and give them 40% interest, 20% interest. Or give someone a mortgage. SubhanAllah, for the rest of their life, so that they can live and pay you and work for you. SubhanAllah. Don't do that. Allah is saying, today we're doing it. Don't cheat people. Don't, uh, uh, don't mislead people. All of this is tricks of shaitan. La tattabi'u khutwati shaitan. Do not follow the footsteps and the tricks of shaitan. He is your enemy. He calls you to forget about Allah. لِيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ and dhikrillah he's going to make you forget the remembrance of Allah. He's going to make you forget about the day of judgment. He's going to make you forget about death. He's going to make you believe that this life is the only life that you need to live. And he's going to make you forget Allah. And that's the whole point. SubhanAllah. The major sin of the people of the hellfire. When Allah is going to ask them, what did you do? They will, Allah will tell them, you forgot me. You forgot me. Today I forget you. Nasullah. فأنساهم أنفسهم اليوم ننساهم كما اليوم ننساكم كما نسيتم لقاء يومكم هذا. Today we forget you because you forgot the meaning of this day. So our purpose is not to forget the meaning of that day. I know some of you come outside every time you tell me, Brother Abdullah, you're so negative. Every time you talk about death, day of judgment, inshallah, we're scared. Tell us something nice, inshallah. We want to be happy, inshallah, ever after, inshallah. Just tell us positive things. I'm positive. I'm not. You don't see me crying here, inshallah. But, <laughs> but inshallah, we, it's not like you're not happy enough. The problem is you're too happy. That's the problem, inshallah. We need to be sad, you know. And, and subhanAllah, all of us are victims of this. One time, subhanAllah, that was um, uh, seven, almost many, many years ago. I, I, I gave a talk about the Day of Judgment, subhanAllah. And then in the middle of the talk, I, I, I laughed during that talk. And then at night when I was, I usually don't talk about dreams. A person came to me in my dream with a, 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 subhanAllah, he was looking down and he looks like his face is shattered. He looks like he's seen the Day of Judgment. He tells me what is so funny about the Day of Judgment, that you talked about the Day of Judgment today and you laughed. SubhanAllah. Can you imagine? I realized how dumb I was, how an idiot I was. I had no idea what I was talking about. I'm doing it right now, subhanAllah. May Allah forgive us. If you see his face, it looks like someone who saw it. And if you see his face, you will never be the same again. That's what Rasulullah told the Sahaba. لَوْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا أَعْلَمْ لَضَحِكْتُمْ قَلِيلًا وَلَبَكَيْتُمْ كَثِيرًا If you know what I know, if he found them laughing, he came to, he to the Sahaba and he found them laughing, he said, if you knew what I know, you will laugh very little and you will cry a lot. Subhanallah, what is waiting for us is very long. We need to prepare for it. So, today we're so distracted. We need to go back to the basis, go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. And for Allah, don't be misled by the advancement of technology. Allah could make it disappear overnight. Overnight it would disappear. Allah is saying that once people have control over the earth and they think they could do anything, the order of Allah would come. And as if like nothing happened, it would be completely destroyed, just like the people of the past. One day, one night, when the order of Allah comes, when people disobey Allah, جل, they will all vanish. And this punishment will not come, it's not going to be announced on the news. It's going to come as a surprise, and it's going to be widespread, and it's going to be all of a sudden. We should not be misled by the shaitan. 
So I thought he would be like, we need to go back to the source in the time of confusion. Go to the Quran, go to the wisdom and the knowledge of Allah. And as long as you hold firm to the wisdom and the knowledge of Allah, you follow the wisdom of Allah, you follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who is the application of the knowledge and the wisdom of Allah, you will never be misguided and you will never go astray. And this is reading the Quran, understanding the Quran, understanding the Sunnah Nabawiyah and following it. As long as you hold firm to it, you will never be misguided, whether it's by shaitan or confusion, you'll always be safe. فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ Who have followed my, follows my guidance, they should have no fear, nor shall they grieve. May Allah Azawajal forgive us, inshallah. Time is always limited. There is a lot, of, a lot of brothers and sisters who are suffering, who are sick. Some of them have difficulties due to offer them. Allah Azawajal make their life easy. May Allah forgive those brothers and sisters who died. May Allah Azawajal grant them high ranks in paradise. May Allah Azawajal make it easy for us to build our masjid. May Allah Azza wa protect us, protect us from all this confusion that is happening today. May Allah Azza wa protect us if there is a punishment. May Allah Azza wa protect us from the punishment of the grave and the day of judgment. May Allah Azza wa make us among those people who are closer to him. May Allah Azza wa put his love in our hearts so we can love him. May Allah Azza wa make us prepare for that day. May Allah Azza wa guide us to the righteous deeds that are most beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallah, nobody could guide to this except you, Allah. Make us among your beloved servant to Allah Azawajal. Grant us success in this world and the hereafter. Make us die Muslims. Make us die true, sincere Muslims. Subhanakallahu wa bihamdik. Nashadu wa lanka wa daka la shaykh. Nastafiru wa natubu alayk. Wa nashadu anna muhammadun abdu wa rasuluk. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Let me ask you a dessert dua for us. It's اللهم يا رحم الرحمين يا أكرم المطين اللهم إنا نسألك بصفات كل أولى وأسماءك الحسنى وأسماءك العظم يا رحم الرحمين اللهم صرخنا نافي فلسطين يا رحم الرحمين اللهم كلهم عونا ومعينا وحافظا وناصرا يا رحم الرحمين اللهم انصرهم على عدائهم عدائك عداء الدنيا يا رحم الرحمين اللهم استرهم بسترك الجميل يا رحم الرحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهل سهل يا رحم الرحمين اللهم أرفع منهم يا رحم أحزانهم يا رحم الرحمين تقبل شهداءهم يا رحم الرحمين ويسر لهم أمورهم جميعا يا رحم الرحمين وانصرهم بنصرك العزيز فلا ناصر لنا إلا أنت يا رحم الرحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على رسولنا الله. صلى الله عليه وسلم. To pray for our brothers and sisters. Now, I want to have everybody's attention. Please, it's very important. As you see, our mission is in the last stage of seeing the sun. That means the sun is going through right now. We have the trusses sitting there. Inshallah, Saturday, the inspector is going to come approve. Sometime within the two weeks, we're going to have the plywood covered. No more sun going through, inshallah. Whoever is sitting here, it's part of this mission. Dua is there. Effort, you do I mix me the strings to go to make a step forward. It's not coming from me, it has nothing to do with me. I'm just lucky to be part of this. So, we need you to see the Quran. Since we're approaching uh, for the roof plywood, we have the money for plywood. As soon as we put the plywood, we have to put foaming. So, uh, uh, we need you to drive. Anybody can support the project, definitely, we need an individual can come step in, can deal with those. Uh, Forming company and then straight from otherwise, as soon as we put the plywood, we'll start getting damaged with the heat. And we're not stopping, we have to do it. Always we have faith and Allah will just bring the right people for our project. If you have any question regards our mission, come see. Me. And another good news that I have is uh, there is a lot right next to the Imam, a stupa cell. Uh, we purchased the property tax, uh, one of the bro brothers sitting here, is, uh, he helped us out. But the owner of that property owes a lots of money when, when it comes to tax. And now he stepped in and said that, guys, uh, I want to sell. And he's asking quite a bit of money. Uh, I told him that I would go ahead and share with the community, see if we're interested. Otherwise, just go ahead and put it in the market and whoever comes to buy from you, go for it. Because he's uh, in the lock land. He doesn't have no access other than he's using the Imam house to get in. So we need dua for that one as well. So the right people to show up purchase that property and we'll be part of our mission. Uh, if you have a question, come see me, inshallah, regards on this. And master visa card, we've done it for our mission. Whoever accepted since last few years, 
you can go and get the claim money back if you had a business account. I'll be able to help you out. More information, come see me over there. Inshallah.